tell you, there's uh, something to say about this lifestyle. There's always something to do that's going to keep you in shape. <laughs> so this morning, I knew this was going to go eventually, but this morning this fell over. And I figured out from one of the subscribers told me why it's falling over. What happens is the ground freezes, rises up, and then shrinks, rises it up, and shrinks. Well, now it's thawing out. It's 70 degrees today. The ground's wet. It's very saturated from all the rain we've had. So it kind of leaned over and fell over. So I had to restack it. And you can see, well, I would imagine you can see that this is lighter color than this over here. This looks like it might have been uh, sun stain, which is exactly what it is. So in the end, this might actually be a good thing. It might dry out faster now that I've rotated it all around. So the uh, inside is now outside, so the sun will have a chance to dry it. <laughs> so, but everything keeps you in shape around here. It's a, it's a really good lifestyle to stay healthy. When we were in nomads, I gained a lot of weight. I can tell now that I'm losing it. Of course, we've been eating this carnivorous diet. That's helped out a lot. I've gained a lot of muscle mass in my chest and arms. That's pretty good. I haven't really worked that hard all winter, you know, physically. And I'm able to come right out here and stack a pile of wood. Probably in less than a half hour. Of course, I had to get it off the lawn more so I could get in there. But it fell over here also. So that just tells me the ground is getting really saturated. And it's leaning over. I'm not really sure what to do about it. I know a lot of people say I should stack it in a, this circle. Wrangler Star does that. But there's been a lot of studies done on that. It's okay when you got pine. And I'm sure Wrangler Star has pine. Yeah, I mean, he may not, but I think he does. This is oak. And it takes two years, a year to two years, for it to dry. In, in that circle configuration, it doesn't dry. So you stack it like this. The downside is it falls over. Of course, you could stack it on pallets, but the problem then is, is if the pallets start to rot, they break and it falls over anyways. It's just something I'm going to have to deal with, I guess, throughout life is restacking firewood. It's not the worst thing in the world. One of the things I did this time is this is two stacks. So there's a stack on this side and then a stack on that side. So on the top layer, I took really long pieces and I laid it on both stacks. That should help keep it from rolling over on its side because then it would have to pull the other side also. So I don't know if that'll work, but that at least my theory. Now, of course, the biggest problem I have is we get all this different size firewood. I got this free app and it monitors Facebook Marketplace, and Craigslist. Anybody posts free firewood, we ask them if we can come and get it and they let us have it. So it's all different sizes. So I was coming out to make a video when I discovered the firewood had fallen over. The video I was going to make is back to food. These videos are doing very well, talking about preservation of food, food shortages. But yesterday's video, which is two days ago from you, was the third most popular video I've done in a month. So I thought I'd keep up with the topic because one thing we have plenty of is food, and we don't prep. So John sent me a... He, he does this a lot. He's down in Texas. He sends me pictures of his store, his grocery store. He goes there regularly, I guess. I guess he drives by to go to work every day. He showed me a picture, and the soup aisle was completely bare. We talked about our president said there's going to be a worldwide food shortage. Of course, that means everybody's going to send me comments saying, well, you don't have a food shortage. Well, I'm, I'm not saying you do. I mean, it's not my call. It's the president's call. That's what he said. And I don't even think he means right this minute. I think he means, like, this summer. What it is, is there's fertilizer shortages we're having. And farmers are saying this all over the place. We're having fertilizer shortages. We won't be able to grow as much food. We talked about chicken food. Prices on chicken food are going up uh, 15%. It's so about $2.50 a bag for us. But that's not a big deal for us because in the long run, $2.50, if we were eating peanut butter and bread, the cost would be much higher if we were eating that. But eating eggs... $2.50 a month extra isn't that bad. So I feel like we're in really good shape. We're trying to produce more chickens. We got a hen laying on chickens right now. She's broody. We have like, I don't know, maybe a week left and they should be hatching. When they hatch, hopefully we'll get some more hens out of it. Now we talked about this yesterday. I candled them yesterday and they just don't look like they actually have a living chicken in it as far along as they are. I could be wrong. 
They could they could be just fine. She seems to be happy with them. She's rejected a bunch of them. So it tells me she got rid of the ones that weren't viable. And she kept four. Well, if we can get one hen out of that, that'd be great. Probably get two. You know, you get a 50-50 chance, I guess. So we were talking yesterday. If another one goes broody, we're going to let it go ahead and lay also. Carolyn is a little bit more concerned about the food shortages than I am. Which is kind of odd. She doesn't hardly worry about anything. Seems like I'm the one that always worries about everything. But this food thing seems to have got her concerned. But of course, maybe that's because the food is kind of her responsibility. She cooks every day. She knows what we need and all that stuff. I don't know. I, to me, it's not a big deal. We got a year's worth of canned food. Now, here's the, the thing. is All the preppers talk about stockpiling, stockpiling. The, the canned food isn't a stockpile for us. It's We found some sales on chicken, so we bought the chicken and we canned it. We butchered some chickens, of course, you know, we don't have a freezer, so we canned it. It's not a stockpile, it's, it's no different than having a freezer. But we got a year's worth of meat. There's two weeks worth of food in the freezer. The year's worth of food, if that's all you're relying on, is only gonna get you to a year. After that, you're out. So you made it a year, congratulations. Now what? <laughs> but my thinking is, is and this is where the preppers seem to always stumble. They don't, know, they don't seem to understand this point is what are you gonna do after the year? That year is your time to get more food. It gives you, it's giving you time. So like for us, it's gonna give us time to raise some chickens. It's gonna give us time to raise a garden so we can feed the chickens. It gives us plenty of time. We have four bags of food, and those four bags last about, for the chickens, those four bags last, last us about two months, two to three months. So we're gonna go shopping here shortly. We'll get some more chicken. What I suspect is going to happen is just going to get harder and harder and harder to find food. And then one day you're just out. And it's like, wow, now what? So right now we are starting to see a shortage. John just showed us a picture. Now, this happened to us last year too during the pandemic. John was sending a lot of pictures. Well, this time it looks like it's a different stuff. You know, last year it was things that really didn't matter. But what he showed us was canned soup, which tells me people are stockpiling preppers will tell you to get beans and rice and, and that kind of stuff and we have our beans and rice right here we won't use it because you just burn through that food so fast you eat a cup of rice and then an hour later you want more rice or more food whereas with the chicken or eggs carolyn fix eggs about nine o'clock nine ten o'clock and that gets me all the way to supper time i don't eat anything else in between I just heard a prepper say get peanut butter and jelly with bread. If I'm eating peanut butter, you're gonna go through that really fast. So let's just say I eat four eggs and that gets me through all day. Or I eat four or five peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And I've had this experience. It's not like this is made up information. That's what I used to eat, four or five jelly, uh, peanut butter sandwiches or four eggs. The four eggs, the chickens are gonna replace quite easily. They're giving us about eight eggs a day, eight to 10 eggs a day. I eat four, Carolyn eats three for lunch, and she usually uses one or two for supper. So they're keeping up with us. Carolyn expected that the eggs would overwhelm us and we'd end up having to sell them. So that's why she wants to have our broody chickens hatch more eggs. She wants about five more. That would give us anywhere from 12 to 15 eggs a day. Then if something happened, we could eat our seven eggs in the morning, seven eggs in the evening, and that would be all the food we would need. So maybe have an extra egg or two, 20 to 23 chickens. We got 14 now and 12 are hens. One of the things that is always brought up when I talk about our food storage here in the well house is why don't you lock it up? Aren't you worried somebody's gonna steal it? Well, I'm not worried anybody's gonna steal it. I mean, it's right next to the house. My bed's right underneath there. My office is right underneath that window. You can't make a noise out here. This is gonna be hard to get out. I'm gonna hear it. And we don't leave often enough for me to worry about anybody coming around, snooping around, trying to figure out what's what. The bigger concerns I would have is the chickens. We've already seen somebody on the property. I don't know if they were trying to steal the chickens. That's my assumption. But we've seen somebody here. I heard them. The little alarm I have went off. I heard them. I just figured it was an animal or something. So I came down. But they, when that came out, they must have hidden the camper. And then when I started to walk around, they ran out of the camper and ran off. I don't think they come up to the house. It's just too dangerous. I said this, I think, in a previous video. In this area, it's just too dangerous to 
be sneaking around on other people's property. Now, it's illegal to shoot somebody for trespassing or for stealing. You can't do that. But you're, you're definitely going to be at risk if you start coming on people's property. I would be more concerned if I had 40 acres and my house was way back in the woods and we were gone all the time. That happened to us before. We were robbed twice in one week. We lived way back in, in the cubby hole in the woods. I guess our neighbors were on the other side of the woods, kept an eye on us for probably about a year. They saw our pattern and we worked all the time. We'd leave at night, come home at night. They came in on a Thursday, I think it was. So I immediately tried to reinforce the house. I did everything I could to lock up the windows. I put uh, bed springs, the best way I can explain it, over one of the windows and screwed it into the wall. And then I ordered an alarm system. Well, before the alarm system arrived, they came back in, I guess, on a Wednesday. So it was like six days and they came back to finish up. But again, they knew our patterns. They knew we were gone all the time and we were way back in a cubby hole. Well, here, I mean, there is some mild traffic. It's not constant. But if you're going to come over here if, while we're not home, you're going to be worried that we're going to pull up on you. Like I said, the other thing is we're always home. The truck's always in the, in the drive. If we're not in the drive, it's only for a little bit of time. A couple hours to go shopping once a month. The, the pattern's too sporadic. Locks don't hold back criminals. I told you I put a bed spring over that window. They still got in the second time. So it, those locks don't work. He was crafty. I locked up all my firearms. He was able to get all those open. He took one of my Dremels and was able to cut open those locks. So, I mean, he was, he was smart. So the best security is you, that you're the best security. Here, even if we had an alarm system, it'd take cops hours to get out here. So if you can click on this up next box, I'd take you over to my other channel, I'd really appreciate it. So I hope I can inspire you to start thinking ahead so you can live your dream. Thanks for watching.